Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Talking Over Making Comics. This is episode 5, Transitioning Over to Sequential Art. And I want to talk about a few things today, but we're going to be working on a page from my upcoming book, White Cell Revolution. Uh, this is page 86, and it's going to have uh, the first appearance of a character named Mr. Tanner. So I'm going to be working on this in the background. Um, I'm going to start, I already got the roughs laid down, but I'm going to work into line art, shading, um, all the blacks, all the way to full render, so you'll see the whole page in its entirety at the end of the video. So the topic that I want to try to stick to today is um, transitioning for the first time to sequential art. So if you're an artist that is just getting into um, creating comics, and you've been drawing for a long time, and you do like a lot of you know pin art work or character drawings, things like that, what it's what it's like to transition from that into sequential uh, comic pages, uh, all the storytelling, things like that. And I wanted to kind of cover like my own personal experience when I began uh, working on comics, all the little things that I picked up along the way that I think helped me make that transition so that I got in the uh, a different kind of gear when it comes to uh, my art and the things that I wanted to um convey through my uh, comic book illustrations. So one of the first things that I want to bring up is what I ended up doing is I took a lot of what I knew from television and movies. And I know many of us out there, I mean, you watch your movies and, and you see how they go about telling stories um, visually. And that was a huge help for me to sort of like get my feet wet or at least wrap my head around how you go about illustrating a comic book and telling a story. And so the things that I learned from movies and TV is a lot of like the transitions between, um, you know, the shots or story elements or um, all the little things that like TV shows do well. I mean, they got commercial breaks in TV, so there are always transitions between, um, you know, important scenes, how you, how you utilize cliffhangers how you keep the reader in suspense, things like that. So I took that from television. And then movies, I took a lot of like the cinematography that goes into the way that they shoot movies, um, the way that they'll focus attention on specific, you know, um, even just stuff in the, in the scene or the setting. And it, it creates sort of like drama or suspense, all those kinds of things. You can get a lot of, of, footing if you just sort of like think in that mindset about how they go about making movies and tv and i also thought a lot about like storyboarding so i, I didn't have any experience in storyboarding but i've read a lot of comics and i've seen a lot of movies and television and you can sort of formulate how they go about producing storyboards from a script so that they can take the storyboards and then they shoot you know the video of the final video so when you're thinking of like panel pacing, because pacing is so important in comics, it, it, because you're you're controlling the way the time moves, and you're controlling the way that the reader is going to experience the story play out. Since you're working from panel to panel, each panel is going to take up so much time uh, when the reader's reading the book. So small panels often, you know, speed up time. Large panels can slow time down. Um, if you you know, multiple shots of the same scene can um, prolong the, the time that it takes to read through. And it will feel like the story has been slowing down. So all these things you take in consideration, too, when you're planning out your storyboard and the script and things like that. And I just think that using what you know from your other experiences in enjoying all the different forms of entertainment that is, is like a visual mediums, it all can kind of come together in a way to prep you uh, for when you're about to sit down and take a script and start shooting your, your comic layout. So thinking back to when I started my first comic attempt, this was about like 2013. Um, I was working digitally and everything, but I was trying to plot out like a really short story. So I had like an idea in my head of a larger scope, of a larger story, but I wanted to begin sort of I want to just get my feet wet and and there's a lot of pressure you can put on yourself when you come to like the sequential uh, art because in your head you know you know I draw and I I know how to draw things but 
until you actually start drawing, you know, panels after panels after panels, there's so much that that becomes challenging that you might not have you know anticipated because you're working in a different sort of realm when it comes to uh, panels because you know sometimes like say you're you're working on a scene and it's just as simple as a guy sitting on a sofa, uh, you know, like Axis is in this shot here and and that's not something that you're going to sit down necessarily and, and do a nice print of or, or, you know, some sort of fan art. So all these things are challenging when it comes to transitioning from uh, just drawing pictures of people and, and, and pinups and things like that and fan art. It's challenging to transition. So as an artist, you know, you're always working on drawing everything. You know, you, you try to... Um, Take in the world and then, you know, learn how to draw everything from animals to cars. And and it's sometimes, you know, if you're just working on your, your prints and your pinups and all that, you're often just drawing, like, you know, the human body, the figure. And you forget how much there is when it comes to telling a story. Like, the backgrounds, the, um, all the little details, like, you know, if you have an, uh, props on this, on, I call it the set, you know, of the story that you're telling. All that stuff adds up when you're taking on a full page and so it can be intimidating when you begin uh, sequential art and so what I kind of did for myself is when I when I sat down and started I wanted to do something that I felt would be a little bit more in my comfort zone so that I can kind of maintain confidence throughout the page to see it through because there was there was many times before where, you know I would just dive in and find that where do I even begin like where, how do I even start the full page you know how do I lay out the panels all that kind of thing so what I did when I really sat down and, and worked on that first book is I gave myself sort of like leeway and I, I really had to convince myself that it's not about how good the art is it's more about how am I approaching telling the story and hitting all the, the right points in each panel and to make sure that if someone was going to read the page, that they can absorb the story as it is, even without dialogue. You know, I wanted to make sure that the art spoke for itself. And the accuracy and all that wasn't as important as it was just to sort of tell the story. And it's hard to do. I mean, you know, especially if you're seeing yourself work out, work it out, and, and there's so much wrong with the technicalities of everything, you know. It's hard to like sort of look past that and say, okay, you know what, I'll just keep going. I'll move through it until I have a page that I can look at and sort of like, you know, zero in on what makes a comic book a comic book when it comes to, you know, the sequentials. And so early on, I had sort of, I remember going to the comic book shop and then looking in the dollar bins and trying to find comic art that to me spoke to me in a way that like it gave me sort of like an inspiration to not stress about the technicalities of things. So in other words, I was looking for an artist that was a bit like more expressive, that was a little more fearless, that was okay to make things look a little wonky. You know, you know the styles out there that are like very stylistic. So um I remember looking through and I came across uh one book and it was called it was called Robots Versus zombies, I think, or zombies versus robots, and it was an Ashley Wood art book, a comic book, and I was looking through that, and the way he did it, he has a very like a lot of it's like almost like painted, um, traditionally, and then a lot of the stuff he does is, is very like expressive, very scratchy, very loose, and I remember looking at it and going, he can tell a story that's so interesting, dynamic, yet the, on the technical level, you know. It, it wasn't so clean and precise. So it took a lot of pressure off me to say, hey, you know, I can go in this way. I can go in a more expressive way that tells the story just to get a grasp of how you go about making a page. And so I remember taking the book home, looking at it. And, and I think even before I started my own page, I tried to replicate what he did in, in the opening of the book. In the opening of the book, it was like three wide panels. So pretty simple like layout. And, but it was a very interesting shot. It was almost like a, an old Wild West looking scene. It was just a man in a heavy coat uh, walking through like uh, the ruins of like an old town or something like that. And it was just, it was really interesting. I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to replicate this. I'm going to try to go in his approach and see what that feels like. 
And I remember doing it thinking, okay, this is a little bit more freeing. It's not as uh, restrictive. And it allowed your mind to focus on what was important, which was, you know, uh, reading it as they were scenes and reading it as it was a story. Because it was, it was, a, it was art, but it's not a piece of art in the sense that it's a, it, you know, it's a final pinup. It's more of like uh, an expressive story. And so that's how I kind of wrap my head around it. So I, you, you kind of get into a different mindset, and you got to allow yourself to make mistakes and allow yourself to like look weak, basically artistically because when it's new you don't know how to do it you don't know how to make it look 100 percent right and so you have to start somewhere and i knew that it was a crucial point for me i wanted to start and make comics and so all that kind of coalesced into me beginning the first page of a book called it was called the proxy loop and it was a sci-fi kind of story and what I did is for that first page, I, did, I borrowed the Ashley Wood three panel layout. And I'm like, I'm going to take the three panels. I'm going to tell my own little super micro story in these three panels. And so it was a, the way I did it was, it was like a scene, um, sci fi scene. He was on a planet and he was falling from the outer, the outer space, like into the planet, kind of crash lands on the planet. And so it was really short. It's very simple sort of a uh, story. And I think when you're starting out, go with simple, go with like, effective and, and and very like straight to the point but then like take some liberties in how you tell it you know and so that's what i did and I, and I remember like working through it and just trying to keep in mind that you know just draw the art but don't worry about like how precise the hand looks how the, each finger looks how just tell the story so you know give yourself some courage in that in that aspect and when i did it i had the, the whole page complete all three panels were done. I looked at them and I thought, you know, this is a comic. This is telling the story. And I focused on what was happening in each of the three panels. I made sure that each panel was strongly focused on a story point, which is something I took away from from reading some of the books about making comics. Is that when you, anytime you're making a panel, make sure that you are focusing on something that's of importance. You know, don't waste any panels. Don't waste any um, of the readers sort of a, a attention span because th that's when they're going to get lost. So make sure that whenever you're making a panel that you're focusing on the pivotal point that you're trying to, to make in that panel. Now, everyone that makes comics will tell you different. You know, there are rules. There are sort of guidelines in the comic industry, especially in the big two, um, about, you know, how you go about making comics. Certain rules you don't want to break, certain things like that. Now, I, I, I pushed all that to the side. I, I realized that like a lot of what I enjoy about comics is, is the things that are unique, the things that look different from the rest. And I wanted to make sure when I made my comics that I was, I was moving in the direction that what I was going to create was going to be unique to me. And it was important to me. So granted, like early on, before I attempted to do sequential art, I did take in a lot of information around me when it comes to things you're not supposed to do, things you're supposed to do. You know, they don't like you breaking panels um, in the industry normally. Uh, companies like Image, I mean, they they did do that. They, they, it was a very art-driven company, so they allowed the artists to kind of go crazy and experiment, and and that was that's cool. But like for me, things like breaking panels, things like um, switching up art techniques in the middle of the book dependent upon the scenes, things like that. I wanted to tr sort of embrace a lot of that. I wanted to do what I thought would work the best for the story. And so relating to like trying to find other artists that were doing things like that is what it ended up doing. And again, that just fueled that sort of like mentality about being original and doing what you think feels right. So, I mean, a big piece of advice in the early stages of transitioning into sequential art is just don't be afraid to experiment because usually those experiments are the things that stand out as interesting. Those are the things that will surprise the reader, viewers, things like that. And I mean, you want to keep in mind that the rules of like that are tried and true about making comics, because that's going to help you with your foundation of, of making them. But if you feel something like would work better, if you want to just try to do something a little crazy, I'd say go for it, try it. I mean, especially if you're working digitally, you're not going to be wasting any materials. If you're working digitally, you're not going to be wasting much time. You can always just undo it. So go for it and see where it takes you. And because I think a lot of the early exp 
experimentation that I was doing led into a lot of some of the style choices that I made in my art. And it continues to sort of evolve that way. And I just sort of embraced the idea of experimenting. Don't limit yourself. Don't be afraid to see what it looks like if you, if you just try it, you know. And, I mean, that might be, I mean, most people might already be doing that, but I just feel like, I, I know as an artist, there's a certain way that you understand that people go about making comic illustration. It's from what you've seen in DC Comics, Marvel Comics. They all have a style, uh, generally. And so you, you don't always want to deviate too much from what you think is accepted. But truthfully, when you're making comics, and you're, especially if you're self-producing your own, doing the things differently is what's going to set you apart, what's going to grab attention. Okay, so talking from my own personal experience, transitioning into working uh, in sequential art, it was it's an interesting thing kind of happened after that because I've been working and doing my own comics since 2015, where I, that was when I did the first one that I did White Cell Inoculation. A lot, I've grown a lot in the last you know few years um, in understanding how to go about creating panels and uh, telling a good story, things like that. I'm still involved or evolving. I'm still trying to improve my abilities. I'm always in take, taking in all the new um, comics, other people's you know work. A lot of indie guys are very inspiring out there that are producing their own work too. But all that said, something I found interesting is that. I almost have a difficult time going back to doing pin art and fan art um, because there's a great value in, in, in completing uh, sequential art. And I think what it is is if you're someone that likes to tell stories in your own stories. Now, if you're if you're like an artist and you love just drawing and you like to, you know, it doesn't matter if you're coming up with stories or not. I mean, that's one thing. But personally for me, I mean, I, I get it a real thrill out of telling stories. So once I began doing sequential art and I got comfortable in, in making pages, um, it was hard to go back to print because to me, the visual is, is great when it comes to doing like a, a nice like character shot. And it's a lot of, it is fun to do. I mean, I still love working on that. But when you get the gratification of completing a page that tells a bit of a story, a piece of a story, you get kind of like a craving for that. And, and, and it, Part of me, if I'm honest, it almost feels like if I'm not making sequential pages, I'm not getting as much done. I'm not I'm not doing as much work. Uh, I'm not getting as much accomplished, I kind of think. And that may be wrong. I mean, I don't know yet, but I'm, that's just the way I've been feeling. And so I have to consciously take time out to make sure I focus on, like, say, doing like a pinup of one of my characters for my books. Because I, I want to have that. I want to have, you know, character spotlights. I think, you know, readers and fans of this, the stories, they'd like to see that, too. And a lot of that's, you know, a bit of that's marketing and things like that. You want to make sure that you're trying to help push your books and those are, that's a great way to do it. But I find it that it's, it's hard for me to sort of pull myself away from doing sequentials. I'm so comfortable now in that, uh, you know, when I sit down to work, that's what I focus on. I got a script and uh, I'm, I'm excited to begin the work on the page. And another note, I think when you're, when you're working on your pages, Every time you start a new page, because it's one page at a time with these things, like you have to just look at the page and say, you know, I'm, I, you don't want to rush through it. You want to make each page count. So just focus on each page and each panel at a time. And then, you know, you start putting them together. And then next thing you know, you have a complete book. But something that I got to keep in note is every time I begin a page, I have to, I want to make sure that I pull myself together to get excited about the page number I'm working on. And I, and I, this was like something I found out like a couple of years ago and, you know, I do pages and, and it was like, it was like 50% stress, 50% excitement because, you know, it, it, it always meant a lot to, for me to just like to get the page right. It was very important to me. And so there's a bit of stress involved if you, if you get it that way. But I found just getting yourself excited for things that are happening in the page or the scene and really kind of taking it in and then, then diving into the page. A lot of times I find that the results are better and I find that um, I can jump up quicker almost. And there's a lot of benefits to sort of just pumping yourself up for every page. And it can be hard because, I mean, when you're on page, like this, this page here is like 68, I think. And so when you're, at, when you're that deep into the script, it can be hard. But if you catch yourself sort of like drifting out and saying, you know what, all oh, this is going to be a drag, pull this off. You got to stop, take a break. 
and then try to wrap your head around the, the page, what's going to happen, and, and try to get yourself amped up. Because I'll tell you what, if you're not amped up about the page, then the reader is not going to be very interested. If the page is, is coming out of you and, and you're in a bored state, then the page might, you know, it, it might appear to be a little less interesting. And so that's something to consider. And, and, and like a piece of advice I would say is, is amp yourself up every time you begin a page and it'll, it'll carry you through and it'll help, I think, in the long run. So things to think about, too, if, if you're starting sequential artwork. I think if, if, if anything is the number one thing, piece of advice, because the way that an artist's mind works, it's, most artists are pretty hard on themselves. And it's like a constant battle, and it's like a, an ebb and flow that allows you to make you know, good artwork, but it also really kind of, it can mess with you. It can make you feel, you know, your, your own self-doubt can drive you, but it also can hold you back. So one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give that I think helped me and I and and I still I still do it, but it's you can't compare yourself to the other artists. You can't compare yourself to what you're seeing. You take it in and you use it as an inspiration, and that that'll help you. But if you're out there and you're starting out, and you're looking at some of the other guys that are producing, you know, sequentials and things like that, you can't get inside your head and and, and all that. You need to sort of just compete with yourself. Keep that in mind. That especially if you're starting out, that you are starting out. So just kind of keep your head down and go through at your pace and you will see your skill level improve. And I'm guilty of being pretty bad at like, I'll see other artists and it's hard to compare. It is. And I remember um, when I began White Cell Inoculation, there was a time where I was like off of the social media. I was off Facebook and all that because I didn't want one. I didn't want like other outside influence at the time. I wanted to sort of like, when I began it, I wanted to sort of just go with, instinctually on my own like what it would uh come out to be without any outside influence you know but as another bonus was i was i wasn't really seeing other people's artwork to give myself a hard time about it but i think it's really important it's just to stay on task stay on your goals as an artist and know that you really are just competing with yourself you're, you're going to grow as an artist and you need to see your own mistakes but don't focus too much on what's going on around you and if you are, use it as a positive. Use it as a motivator. See the things they're doing and say, you know, how can I, how can I maybe like uh, use utilize this in a way that works for my style? And then you can you can find you know great you you might make great strides in in things that you find difficult by observing the other people's sequential. So if you are looking at someone's sequential that looks really good, look at it closer and see what makes it look good and try to use that. But definitely don't compare yourself to others out there. It doesn't do any good. It's not going to help. It's not going to make you better if you're looking at their stuff and wondering why maybe yours isn't there. So just something to keep in mind. So when you begin diving into, you know, your just, just sequential page that you want to do and you got your script and you, you got all the panels figured out and you kind of got like a visual in your head because that's what you got to do. You look at the panels, you read the page as it is sort of visualize how it would play out cinematically. That's what I usually do. And then I choose what you know how each panel is gonna work into the next and how what the flow is going to be. Because the eye does do a natural sort of path and you want to make sure that the eye is going to naturally follow the story through the page. And so once you have that all figured out and you know how the shots are going to look. Don't be don't shy from the difficult shots, in my opinion. Don't go the easy route. Um, if you if you think a really interesting dynamic shot that might be a challenge for you would work the best, go that way. And work that way through the roughs. And lay it out as best you can. And then just sculpt that rough as much as you need to. And if you're working digitally, I mean, it works great. You know, use your rough. And if it's not working out, lower the opacity is really low. Put another layer on it. Work that rough more. And keep doing it until you think you may have figured it out or you found a solution. Or at least leads you into a different, maybe something that might work. It's, it's in between um, your skill set and then also what you were aiming for. And work on each panel that way and don't give up on the shot. If you really think it's important and you know it'll work, try to make it work. You know, I, I, you know don't, don't. Overstay your welcome on the on, on if it isn't working. I mean, everything is about time management, and that's true. But 
I just feel like sometimes your visual inside your head, how you see it, can create something that is going to be much more dynamic than just your traditional like cookie cutter shots that 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 you feel like might be the easy route. Spend as much time as you need in the rough stage. Get your roughs locked down to where you feel like this is the way that you want the final line work to be, and then you go into your line work. And then know that you can make changes in the after, you know, after your line work's even laid out. You can go in and you can add your effects and things that might brighten it up. And I've said before, um, I had just such a huge realization at, at, at some point about my art, and it was it was just kind of following through and not giving up on drawings. And I want to keep like reiterating that because it was very helpful when it comes to getting work completed and also um, evolving as an artist. You know, earlier today I was working on a piece. I did an art piece of Link. She's the girl in the back there, um, Agent Link. I was doing an art piece with her, and I started with sort of like a sort of I think up up and down vertical um, canvas, and was just started working on a a scene of her holding a gun. It was going to be like a pinup, and it was just like I was struggling with to make it work. And it just wasn't happening. I almost dropped it, and I was like, you know what? Let me try this. So I spun the canvas. I stretched her out a bit, like the the uh, the pose a little bit, and then I found it was pretty interesting looking shot. And then I spent another, I think, like an hour on it, maybe an hour and a half on it, and got it all finished. And it ended up coming out great. And it was something that like I wouldn't have been able to like pull together if I would have just to drop it and then move on. Like that piece wouldn't have survived, and it would never existed. But it would end up being a really awesome piece. So. I really encourage to try to stick it out as long as you can until there's like these like almost like a a wavelength when it comes to you doing your art. I think a lot of you guys probably realize that when you're working on an art piece, you go up and down. It's like a, a roller coaster ride of emotions and thought and all that because there's moments where you're confident in what you're doing and then you'll hit like a bump and you're like, uh oh, and it might feel like it's going to derail the whole thing. Just stick out for the whole ride. Wait and see what it looks like when it's done. If you're not happy with it that happens, you know, take what you learn from it and move on to the next one and just kind of keep that forward momentum and just keep producing work. But don't give up on it and just see what happens, see what comes out of it. Because a lot of times you can get some really killer looking pieces if you just stick it out. So what is it to tell a story, you know, sequentially? And really what it is, is it's like a hybrid between a, a regular book and film. In movies and it's like when the readers reading a comic book and they're you know taking in the story the artwork is giving them a visual it's giving them a place to feel like grounded and in, in the story and they know what's going on and what it, what things look like but unlike movies when you're reading comic books you're reading between the panels and so the brain does a lot of work subconsciously without you really realizing it which which is interesting because when you're reading like two panels one after the other your brain fills in all the things that happen in the moments of time between the two panels. And so it's an interesting way of uh, absorbing, you know, a story. And the relationship that readers, that comic readers have with comic books is a unique one, I think, because you're developing so much of the what's happening inside your imagination and you're being fed through the artist's work of, you know, what that experience is is going to look like but in between the panels you're developing the the living breathing world so it's it's a really cool dynamic that comics offer to a reader and when you're making your own comics something to consider is is give enough credit to the reader to sort of um build the story with the information that you give him so in other words when you're telling a story in a sequential scene, you don't necessarily have to give them every single piece of information. Just sort of realize that the reader is, is going to do a lot of that inside their own mind in between the two the panels. So make sure that the panels are doing their job. Make sure that you're telling the story points that need to be told in each panel and let you know leave the rest to the reader to sort of build that part for themselves. Because, I mean, that's what's also going to create sort of a relationship between your book, your story, and the reader. And it's like, it's a little bit more of an intimate thing than it would be like in a movie where you're seeing every single moment play out in front of your eyes. 
you're all you're witnessing it as it is. But with comics, you're building a lot of what's happening inside your head. And so keep that in mind when you are um, when you're when you're telling the story and give the reader that credit that they can they can tell a lot of the story with limited information. And often it can be more immersive if you are giving them less information. Even like visually, I know there's times where like uh, I'll, I'll shoot scenes where the characters a little bit farther away. And instead of zeroing in on every fine detail, you give them sort of suggestion that, that they're there. And then the reader in their mind knows that it's the character that's there. And then they visualize it as it would be uh, realistically. You know, you, you wouldn't see all the details in real life. So so it's like it's it almost becomes more real when it's a suggestion because your brain is start it has to put the effort into making it real. And so it's not given to them. So. It's just something that I wanted to share to keep, like when you're working on your art, to keep in mind that you don't necessarily have to give them every single detail. Let them readers just sort of figure it out. And um, they actually can enjoy a story, uh, I believe, more so if, if, they're, if they're pulled into the story and they, and they have to do more of the uh, processing. All right, so taking a quick jump to the page that I'm working on here. Um, I have... I'm in the end phase, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I'm finishing up this page by now. I'm working on flats, laying out grays in the backgrounds, things like that. Um, I wanted to create a mood that in this um, scene. The scene takes place in a farmhouse, and the white cell story takes place in our far future, about 2081. And in this farmhouse, there are all these old um, antiques, things from like the 70s. So to the characters in the this, in this scene, the team is seeing these things and it looks like, you know, it, it's like an ancient museum. So it's an interesting dynamic uh, for the story because um, they haven't really been exposed to this sort of, uh, you know, atmosphere in a long time. They mostly live in like, you know, uh, army camps, things like that. So it's a cool little scene here. But um, I'm closing in on the, all the art and really trying to create a different vibe for this scene. You know, I think it's a great way to transition and separate um, story arcs, or I'm sorry, like a story, just basically between scenes. Picking a style or picking a mood and then changing it up. You know, a lot of times I'll have them when they're going from inside to outside. Uh, if it's nighttime, I'll, I'll try to find ways to have it lit uh, through lighting so that it's interesting dynamic, but it's a big, you know, transition from going in from an indoor to an outdoor setting. So. Keep that in mind too when you're working on your sequentials is if you're transitioning uh, between story points and story plots or moments, uh, make sure you go in with like, give it like a different mood, give it a different vibe. And that helps the reader understand that you've moved on into a new scene. Coming up here now is one of my favorite parts of working on a page. This is the, the basically the end phase that I do which is um, kind of like a, a lighting or effects layer that I sort of work on top of all the art. And I just sort of try to bring out different lighting effects, um, textures, things that kind of will make the world feel more realistic. And uh, it's, I, I just really like this part of uh, completing the page. Um, and I think, you know, thinking about what is gonna make your stuff look unique is something that all of us artists are always considering. And I think, you know, finding something that you find exciting or interesting and utilizing that in a, in a different way could be like maybe like a trademark thing that you do or it could be something that people will recognize your art for. And it's it's something that will come with time, but experimenting again, experimenting with all the different tools that you're, um, you know, that you that you have access to and just making the most of it um, sometimes will lead you into things that that can work as a sort of trademark or something that you that you'd like to do that maybe might set you apart a little bit and another thing and i've said it before but you've got to love your characters and i love this guy here this is mr tanner he is oh i don't want to spoil anything from the story but he's a interesting character um and when you love your characters, I mean, it, it makes it so much more enjoyable to produce comic books. And I also think the, the work will show for it, too. And, you know, giving each character care and attention when you're working on the panels um, 
is what's going to make your book better. And when you go back and you read through your story, it's it's such an awesome sort of experience to see those characters that were an idea, you know, go from a script to panels, and then you put it all together with the lettering, and then you read through it, and then they kind of come alive. And and the more that you do that, the more that your like your love for the characters will grow, and your understanding of them will become very real. You know, and I mentioned before, I mean, the characters that I work on now, I, I mean, they're just as real as like Superman or Batman would be. So it's a really gratifying experience to make comics. So all of you guys that are like on the verge of beginning your sequential arts and you really want to produce and make your own comic, you, you got to dive in. You got to give yourself the room to make mistakes. You got to find your inspirations that motivate you to do interesting work that you don't get bored with. If you're working on something that just isn't thrilling and the script isn't, you know, isn't really, you know, doing it for you, but you want to begin, do a short story, come up with a small scene, just something and, and, and get the sequential down and then do another one and just keep going. And you'll get to a point where you're, you're very comfortable working in that sort of um, realm and you will be able to produce a complete comic book, which I know many of you. I mean, that's that's what the goal is. And for me, that was the goal. And once I met that, then it was just like, I need to make more and more and more. So it's it's a great experience. And it's definitely something to strive for if you're into um, comic illustration and you love comic books and you love to draw, go for sequential work. See what it's like. Experience that storytelling art form. And I guarantee you, you won't go back. Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching this episode of Talking Over Making Comics. This is the final page, um, and I appreciate you guys listening. I hope you guys found some of it useful. Uh, let me know if there's any questions you guys have for future videos. Leave in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them and help you in any way I can. Thanks again, and check out my Facebook at uh, Minecore Comics. Check out my Instagram at Milanchek Nick. You can see all my updates, and follow at MinecoreComics.com to order your books in print.